Have you ever wondered what's in the fine print of that cruise contract or even some of the other things that cruise lines just aren't telling you? Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, have you ever wondered what is in the fine print that the cruise lines are not telling you? Or what happens in real life on a cruise that really just isn't obvious if you just looked at the cruise line advertisements or brochures? So in today's video, I am gonna go over 13 things that just might surprise or even shock you that the cruise lines don't tell you. Now, while this video is actually all in good fun, there are actually some real tips that you'll wanna know about. Now, if you watch my channel, you know what I'm gonna say next, but if you find this video helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs Thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. Number one, the cruise line can change your itinerary at just about any time. Now, this is actually something that's in the fine print in the brochure, on the websites, and even in your cruise contract, but still sometimes it does surprise people. And sometimes people feel like they would like some sort of compensation if a cruise port is missed. Now, some things that can happen are really obvious. Like if you book a cruise during hurricane season, of course, if the cruise ship has to avoid a hurricane, it is going to go to other destinations. It might even go to a completely different itinerary. Now, this happened a few years ago when there were cruise ships that were supposed to be heading to Bermuda and they actually went to the Canada, New England area. Now that was something that disappointed a lot of people or some people were happy of course because they were at least on a cruise ship but of course that can be a complete surprise. Most of the time it's just a matter of maybe you might go to a different island rather than the island you were expecting and even though it could be a little disappointing because you have chosen your shore excursions and maybe dreamt of those itineraries, it is something that can happen after all you are on a ship and if the seas are rough the cruise ship is never going to go somewhere that it is possibly unsafe. Number two the time in the cruise port is never as long as it looks like on the itinerary or on the website or in the brochure and that's because basically you always have to get back on the cruise ship about a half an hour before sail away time. So if your cruise is supposed to be in St. Thomas as an example from nine until five o'clock you actually have to be on the ship at the latest by 4.30, otherwise you're considered late. And this is really important because cruise ships can, and they do, actually leave some cruise passengers behind who are late getting back on the ship. You can Google that, but there are some videos. Number three, cruise line error doesn't guarantee you that the cruise ship won't leave without you on embarkation day. Now this really surprises a lot of people because well, we often hear the advice that we should fly in one day before, but sometimes people think if they book cruise line air and the cruise line does guarantee to get you to the cruise ship, well, that the cruise ship will actually wait for you, but that's actually not the way it works. You still need to get to the cruise ship by your boarding time. And when it is time for the cruise ship to sail away, they will actually go. So what does cruise line air really mean? What does that guarantee mean? Well, it means that they will help you to get to the cruise ship. So it's definitely a helpful thing. It's not a bad thing. And they will guarantee you to get to the cruise ship. But in some cases, what might happen is this might mean that you miss the first two or even three days of your cruise because, well, maybe the first cruise port that they could get you to is maybe St. Martin or Cozumel as an example, and your cruise is already two or three days in. Now you might be put up at a hotel and I guess that's good, but you'll miss out on your cruise and you will definitely not have peace of mind. So even with Cruise Line Air, make sure that you fly in at least one day before. Number four, cruises are actually not all inclusive. Now, of course, there's a lot included on cruises. There's a lot of great value, but there's a lot of little extras that you need to be aware of. So whether that's gratuities or a crew incentive or a service charge, whatever the cruise lines choose to call it now, whether it's a beverage package for alcoholic drinks and even specialty coffee, and in a lot of cases, even soft drinks, there are a lot of things that are actually not included on your cruise. And even if you do buy a beverage package, oftentimes you are then pressured once you're on the cruise ship to upgrade that beverage package to have some of those higher end or premium drinks. Now, if you've been on a cruise before, let me know what you think of what a lot of people like to refer to as the nickel and diming of the mainstream cruise lines. Number five, the cruise line can actually charter your cruise ship. Now this has shocked some people who have booked maybe a year or more before and then all of a sudden they get an email from the cruise line saying, so sorry, your reservation has been canceled. We've actually canceled the entire cruise because we've chartered the ship. And maybe they've chartered the ship for a big concert, a big fan group, or maybe an insurance company, something like that. But something else that can happen and that might be 
even worse is that sometimes the cruise line can actually host a big affinity group on your cruise ship. So this is when the group actually has many people, maybe hundreds, maybe a thousand or more people that are all part of the same group on your cruise ship. And then they actually take up some of the venues, some of the lounges, some of the events, and sometimes they can be really loud. So some examples of this are cowboys on a cruise, bikers on a cruise, uh, ballroom dancers on a cruise, not that this is a bad thing, and even clowns on a cruise. Any of this can happen and you wouldn't even know it before you board. Now I do have a little tip. If you wanna make sure there's absolutely no group like this on your specific cruise, you can actually Google your cruise ship, the date, and just write like group cruise, and you'll actually see if there's any big group being sold. Number six, the cruise ship is just never gonna look like it does in the brochures, the websites, or even those ship tour videos. Most of the time, those ship tour videos, even by some bloggers, are really done early in the morning or when people are all off the ship in cruise ports. And most of the time, the cruise ships are just not that empty, except maybe right now while I'm filming this. But most of the time, if that cruise ship is full, it's going to be pretty crowded. Now, of course, I am talking about a lot of the more popular cruise lines. If you are on a smaller, more luxury cruise ship, you are going to have more space per passenger. So you won't really have this as much, but it's definitely a reality for most of the mainstream lines. Number seven, following up on the cruise ship and the way it looks, we're going to have the same thing in the cruise ports. The cruise ports are going to look different when you have maybe three to five cruise ships that are in a port. It is going to be busy. Some of those popular beaches and popular attractions are going to be super crowded. Of course, it's touristy. Now, I do have a little tip as well. If you do go off on an excursion, especially if you go off on your own, if you leave early in the morning, you'll notice that there probably won't be any traffic going to the beach. It might just take you 10 or 15 minutes to get there. But do plan if you're going on your own, leave extra time. When I say extra time, I mean an hour or even an hour and a half or more to get back to the cruise ship. And the reason is that when you get back to the cruise ship at the end of the day, there will actually be traffic if there are a lot of cruise ships in port that day. And you definitely don't want to be late for your cruise ship. Number eight, cruise ships just don't have enough electric outlets in their cabins. Now on newer cruise ships, you might actually find one or two USB outlets, which is something good, but most cruise ships, most cabins just don't have enough. So what you will want to do is bring a cruise approved power bar. Basically, this is a power bar that is non-surge protected. There are only a few that are sold. So what I will do is I will leave a recommendation in the description below. You can find that as well as other cruise essentials that you might find helpful in the description below. And if you could use cruise packing checklists and planning forms for excursions and tracking forms for your hotels and your flights and all of your other cruise information, I do have a printable cruise travel planner. I'll leave the information about that in the description below as well. It is $10 off at the time that I'm recording this video. Number nine, the Wi-Fi on a cruise ship is pricey. Now, internet is just completely different when you're out to sea and you're in international waters. I think what the cruise lines have to do or the cruise ships have to do is they're actually using like a satellite technology. It is just very different from land internet, which is why it is so expensive. So definitely something that you'll wanna do is actually probably get a Wi-Fi package from the cruise line before you go, because if you pay per minute, it's going to be an absolute fortune. Your phone plan from your regular provider, I haven't heard of any anybody's phone plan that actually works when you are on a cruise ship out to sea. But something you could do as well is you could just use the Wi-Fi when you're on land if you want. That might be a good alternative if you don't need the Wi-Fi all the time while you're at sea. Number 10, cruise line promotions. Something that you'll notice is the cruise line promotion may not actually result in a lower price than before the promotion was on. So as an example of this, you might see that the cruise line has 60% off the second passenger. If you've priced the price from the week before, it may still remain the same price. It may be a little lower or it may even be a little bit higher. So I do suggest that if you have a travel agent that you work with regularly, or even if you kind of keep an eye on the pricing, then you'll know when the pricing is better. But sometimes the pricing is not actually better when there is a promotion. Now, there are a couple of exceptions. Take a look always at the extra perks. Sometimes what you will get is extra onboard credit, free gratuities, and beverage packages. Number 11, the cruise ship is more than a resort at sea. It actually runs like a small city. So they actually have a water filtration plant on board because they actually desalinate the water. They actually have a jail or a brig on board. Yes, if people get out of hand, that is a place that they can go. And they actually have, it's a little bit morbid, but they actually do have a morgue on board board as well. Number 12, the cruise line's travel protection may not be enough. 
Now, if you book directly, especially, the cruise lines will always promote their travel protection plan. And I'm not going to say that it's not good because it does give you, in some cases, um, cancel for any reason protection. And this can be something good. However, the medical protection, unfortunately, for many people, if people had a true larger medical emergency, just wouldn't adequately cover. So I know it's something that the cruise lines really, really promote, but you do want to make sure that you do check out third-party insurance to see if it's better coverage for you. Number 13, the cruise ships can actually be late getting back to the cruise port on disembarkation day, and this can actually result in you missing your flight home. Now, most of the time they are back on time, but sometimes what can happen is there can be something delaying them getting into the cruise port, like fog in some of the cruise ports. Other times it takes customs a little while to clear the ship. So always make sure that you do allow extra time and don't book your flight till several hours after your cruise ship is due back in port. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think are other things that the cruise line doesn't exactly tell you in the comments below. And I will also leave the cruise planner that I did talk about. I'll leave that in the description below in case you want to check it out. Now I'll leave a video right at the end of this one, which is all about the embarrassing cruise mistakes that I have to say I've made in the past. I've learned from some of them. So you might want to check that video out next. Bye for now and happy cruise.